Mizuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Ma. We in the building as always, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. I'm chilling at work right now, man. Just enjoying my break. On the road to 2K, man. We passed that 1800 mark. We'll be at the 1900 mark in due time. So shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. All right, y'all. I'm back at y'all with y'all boy. With y'all boy. Canelo Alvarez, you know what I'm saying, man? He just coming out with more statements that just proves furthermore that he wants zero smoke with David Benavidez, man. Along with his bum-ass fans that be on here talking crazy as well, talking about cry about it. Oh, cry about it. Y'all so scared for y'all boy Canelo Alvarez. But let's get into um, exactly what Canelo Alvarez has been saying. And it's not anything new in all honesty because... For real, for real, Canelo Alvarez has said this on multiple occasions. He's just been saying it in different ways. Now, in the latest uh, comment that he had made about the possible fight with David Benavidez, he's pretty much came out and said something. This is me paraphrasing, of course, that, you know, he's at the point in his career right now where he could do whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, he feels like he's earned that right based off of the guys that he's fought in the past. And, you know, fans have said that he's duck fighters before, but he's proved time and time again that he doesn't duck anybody. So because of that, um, he doesn't feel like he needs to prove himself in a fight with David Benavidez. All right. That's what he was saying so far. And then he also was alluded to the fact that Jaime Munguia had gotten this opportunity um, because he was respectful. Pretty much alluded to the fact that David Benavidez hasn't gotten the opportunity because he's been disrespectful. You know what I mean? He He's spoken out about, you know, Jose Benavidez Sr. being disrespectful and talking a lot of shit about him or whatever. You can tell that really gets under his skin, but regardless, those are the latest statements that David uh, Canelo Alvarez has been putting out there. And uh, David Benavidez just did an interview with the Fresh and Fit podcast. You know, I never really watched that podcast, in all honesty, bro. I think they're a bunch of goofies, but I seen that David Benavidez had went on there, and I saw a couple statements that he said. And in all honesty, man, he just feels like he doesn't need to be respectful to Canelo Alvarez. You know what I'm saying? He feels like he earned his spot. You know what I mean? He feels like he earned that opportunity. So what the fuck he need to be respectful for? You know what I mean? So um, that's what he said. And then he just believes that the fight is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So he's going up to 175 pr to pursue the biggest fight possible outside of Canelo Alvarez. And that's the winner of Bivol and Better Be, right? Which I, I think is a great move in all honesty, man. There's no point in pausing your career to, you know, wait on another man. You know what I'm saying, man? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep building your profile. Just keep winning. And eventually, them tables going to turn. We, we've seen it happen time and time again. Whether it was Earl Spence, Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford. We've seen the tables turn when guys just continue moving along in their career and not holding their career up for anybody else. But what I want to get into specifically, man, is uh, pretty much the comments that Canelo Alvarez has been making, man. Because he's shown time and time again that he's completely... Um, shook of David Benavidez and he's looking for any excuse necessary to make it seem like he's not afraid of him. So let's get into the one statement where he said that um, Jaime Munguia got this opportunity because he was respectful. Now, um, <laughs> and there's another statement as well. We're going to address this one first. Now, um, okay, Jaime Munguia is respectful, right? But there's fighters that you fought in the past that have blatantly disrespected you and you still talk on, you, you still talk on a fight with them. Um, you was going at it with, with Chavez Jr. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had a face off and shit was heated between y'all. Uh, Eris Landy Lara came up during your post fight press conference and called you out. And, you know, you had some shit to say about him. Caleb Plant, dead ass, put hands on your face during a press conference and you still fought him. You and Billy Joe Saunders was arguing back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Caleb Plant called you a drug cheat and then called your trainer a fat bitch. And you still fought the man. So I don't think David Benavidez has done anything extreme. He, I don't think he's done anything to the extreme. You know what I mean? There's fighters that have done way worse and you still giving them opportunities. So I'm not trying to hear or um, I'm not trying to hear that bullshit about you alluded to the fact that uh, David Benavidez is disrespectful. And that's why he's not getting an opportunity. You know, that $150 million uh, situation, man. You're calling David Benavidez a nobody, yet you're trying to get him, you're trying to get a price tag, you're trying to get upwards of $150 million in order to face him. If you know he's a nobody, if you know, genu if you genuinely feel like he's a nobody, then why would you put an enormous price tag in order to fight that man? You know that doesn't make business sense if he's a nobody. You see what I'm saying? So that, it, 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 is, is that right there? 
And then, you know, I also heard him say in a recent interview that he's had that he, he'll consider rematching Dimitri Bivol. You know what I mean? Dimitri Bivol beat his ass the last time they fought and stuff like that. And um, I remember when Dimitri Bivol was trying to go down to 68 to fight for Canelo Alvarez's undisputed titles. Canelo Alvarez didn't want to put that on the line. He wanted the fight to be at 175, so he moved on from the situation. And he actually had thrown some shots at Dimitri Bivol and said that um, he don't need him, that, you know, Dimitri Bivol's essentially a nobody. He doesn't need him, and he, he'll he continue going on without him if the fight isn't made. Shit like that, man. Just calling him a nobody, right? So if he's a nobody, right, this is what you're saying. And I could pull up these comments, bro. This is public information, bro. You can just type it on Google. Canelo Alvarez, Dimitri Bivol, nobody. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't bring anything to the table. He's not a star type situation. If that's the case, then why are you willing to rematch him later down the line? You know what I'm saying? You're still leaving it as an opportunity out there, right? Also, when you, uh, you asking for this $150 million uh, price tag for David Benavidez, how much are you getting paid for Jaime Mugia? I highly doubt that you're getting nine figures for him. So, um, what? like, it, it's just so much with Canelo Alvarez, bro. And it's just extremely frustrating at this point, man. And Canelo Alvarez is under this, he, he has this type of arrogance to him that because he's done things in the past, that like fans should be satisfied with what he's with, with who he is and what he's done, bro. The reality of the situation is true. Boxing fans are never satisfied, bro. It's a reason why boxing is called a "What have you done for me lately?" sport because you you have to prove. And Andre Ward has said this: you have to prove time and time and time and time and again that you are great, bro. And this is just what happens when you're at the top of the sport. You could beat this one guy that we called you out to fight, but there's always gonna be somebody else lined up. And as long as you're at the top of your game or you're at least one of the faces of boxing, we're going to keep demanding that you fight certain guys. That's just how the sport goes, bro. You are not the exception, bro. We're not going to give you a pass. You know what I'm saying? Floyd Mayweather was a Hall of Famer far before he fought Manny Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? They say he ducked Shane Mosley. He fought Shane Mosley. They, they wanted to see the, the young gun get an opportunity and they lined him up with Victor Ortiz. Bro, Miguel Cotto, they, they're talking about how Miguel Cotto might give him a tough fight. Manny Pacquiao, oh, he's been ducking Pacquiao. He has proved time and time again that he was great, bro. Andre Ward was essentially, I'm not going to say forced, but very, like, like pushed heavily to move to 175 to face Sergey Kovalev because he was dominating the super middleweight division. They kept demanding fights out of him, demanding fights out of him. And he had to keep rising to the occasion. So Canelo Alvarez, you are no exception, bro. We don't give a fuck about what you did in the past. You know what I'm saying? I heard a great example from somebody that I watch on here on YouTube. His name is 78 Sports TV. It's like, let's say you in a car washing business, right? And your boss got you washing 10 cars. Got you washing 10 cars today. You know what I'm saying? But you you wash you wash nine of them, right? You wash nine of them and you just leave the other one dirty. And the boss is like, yo, man, what's up? Why You ain't never get to wash this car yet. He's like, oh, well, I'll wash the other nine, man. I don't really feel like I got to prove how good I am at, at, at washing cars and shit like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been doing this long enough. You've seen what I'm capable of doing, so, you know, you just need to be satisfied with that. They gonna get you the fuck up out of there if you had that type of mentality, so that's exactly how Canelo Alvarez sounds. Like, you you still living in the past, bro. You still living in the past. You, you still, you living in the past. You talking about your past accolades, but you're, but you're saying that you're our, the current face of boxing. I remember he felt the way when they asked him if Javante Davis was the face of boxing. He was like, no, my friend, I am the face of boxing. All right, so if you're still the face of boxing, there's things that come with that. And with being the current face of boxing, based off of what you're saying, this is what you're saying. You have to fight the best opponents available. And David Benavidez has shown time and time again that he is available and you have yet to pull the trigger in making this fight happen. Jaime Munguia is not as proven as David Benavidez. He does not have a better resume than David Benavidez. You signed a PBC deal and you're avoiding a PBC fighter to the point where PBC has to pull somebody. He, they have to pull a fighter from a whole different promotional company and network to satisfy you. If that don't show that you ducking, I don't know what is. But, you know, this is just another hypocritical statement from uh, Canelo Alvarez. He constantly contradicts himself and nobody checks him. But here on Mazuma TV, we're going to hold that man accountable and call him a duck until he proves us otherwise, man. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this. This is Mazuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm out of here, man. Peace.